This is the all-new 2023 Nissan Ariya Evolve Plus front-wheel drive with a big battery, 87 kilowatt hours. And yes, I'm calling it Ariya and not Ariya. I don't care what you say. It is a Japanese car and in Japanese, Ariya means nice to have or something like that. So let's see if this is nice to have also. It is Nissan's fully electric mid-size crossover and there's so many trims to pick from. You can select between five or six, if I remember correctly, two different battery packs, three different power levels, and also you can pick between front wheel drive or all wheel drive. There's just too many options here. This one, as tested, is a mid trim level. It's the Evolve Plus. It's the front wheel drive variant, and it has the bigger 91 kilowatt hour battery pack, of which 87 kilowatt hours are usable. This powers a single motor at the front axle that makes 238 horsepower and 221 pound-feet of torque. And its predicted range is about 280 miles or 465 kilometers. Prices in the USA start at just over $43,000. This one here would be just over $50,000. And the range tops out at about $60,000, which is a lot of money. In Canada, you can just add about $10,000 to those prices in Canadian dollars. Prices start at 53,000 Canadian dollars. This one is 65,000 Canadian dollars and the most expensive model is 70,000 Canadian dollars. Pedal to the metal, zero to 60 comes in 7.7 .7 seconds or zero to 100 kilometers an hour in 8.3 seconds. Power is good for a regular commuter car. There is nothing to complain about. In warmer climates, front wheel drive, I guess will be just fine. But in countries like Canada, you can buy other cars at this price that are all wheel drive and that just works better. The onboard charger supports up to 7.2 kilowatts for level two AC charging and 130 kilowatts for fast DC charging. So charge times vary from 40 minutes all the way up to 14 hours. Now the interesting thing is that unlike the Nissan Leaf, which you can do one pedal driving, this one has what's called the E-Step and okay, you put it on, it's almost like one pedal driving, like you let go of the gas, it brakes a lot, but it doesn't really ever stop the car. See, now it's just coasting. Like to stop the car, you need to actually step on the brakes. So for that reason, and because the regen works equally as well with the brake pedal, I'm just killing the E-Step and I'm driving it as a regular car, no one pedal driving here, which is a real shame because for me, one pedal driving is all or nothing. We can't do one pedal driving except the very end, like it defeats the purpose. So. No one pedal driving here. On the road, the Ariya is very well sorted. The suspension is soft enough to soak up bumps. It's quiet and it's refined at the same time. And also it keeps lean at a minimum and it actually returns pretty capable handling. If you push hard in the corners, the steering is accurate despite being very light in every other mode other than sport. The car points with precision and grip limits are pretty high. Once you get to the limit, Progressive understeer is the flavor, which is pretty easy to manage, actually. I wouldn't call it exciting, but it is pretty capable. I mean, it turns very well. I have zero complaints in terms of handling. The brakes also work quite well. From 100 kilometers an hour, it came to a complete stop in 42 meters, which is all right. The seats support the body pretty well. The driving position is fantastic. Visibility is great. So overall, driving the Ariya is a very pleasant experience. On the outside now, the Ariya is a pretty good looking car. It has a lot of intense design lines and cool looking wheels. And in colors like this combination with a copper and black, it's very smart looking. Inside, the materials are mostly good. The design is pretty simple. And there are a few interesting odd things. The screen is a good size and very nice to use. The center screen also looks pretty nice, but it has a very thick glass on top of it. So your finger might go crashing into the screen a bit sooner than you're expecting. However, you will get used to that. It supports wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It has a wireless charger, lots of USB ports, and of course, buttons that are embedded into the wood trim, just like in the BMW iX. You have two more tricks in here, which is one, the center console has buttons, so you can slide it back and forth. I don't know why, but you can. And also, check this out. You have not only one glove box, but two. How cool is that? I guess that kind of counteracts the fact that under here, there's not a lot of storage space. So you kind of need that for a glove box. Tech wise, you get everything you really need, including a nice heads up display, a pretty loud Bose sound system, good cameras, and of course, heated steering wheel, heated front and rear seats, 
a very nice sunroof, adaptive cruise control with blind spot monitors, and pretty good driving assistance on the highway. Roominess is good. With this sliding console, you have space on the floor in front of it. So if you want to put your bag there or whatever, just make sure it doesn't slide into your pedals. The door bins have nice space. And in the rear, legroom and headroom are both very nice. The width is enough for three adults, so no issues there. The trunk has a power lift gate. The capacity is great. It's 467 liters, which is 22.8 cubic feet. And the floor covers, you can lift them and use them as dividers and use the extra space underneath. So it's pretty cool. Overall, I have to say that I really enjoyed my week in the Arilla. I like it a lot. It's a very well designed and engineered vehicle. There's only one big problem with it, and that is the price. Because at 65 or 68,000 Canadian dollars, that's just like under $5,000 away from a dual motor long range Tesla Model Y, which has a frunk and a lot more space and the supercharger network and all that stuff and a lot more power. And for less money than what this costs, you can get a rear wheel drive Tesla Model Y and save some money actually. So that damn Tesla Model Y, like you really need to hate Elon a lot to buy this instead of a Model Y. It's a great car. At $50,000, I would love it. At 65, I really can't find a reason why anybody should buy this, but nice car, very expensive. So that's all for today with the Nissan Ariya. My overall score will be eight out of 10, losing two points for the pricing. Otherwise, very nice car. I like it a lot. Everything works wonderfully well. If you love the design and you hate Tesla, well, there you go. Now you have a nice alternative, although I wouldn't buy it. Anyway, um, take care, subscribe, share this video with your friends. Till next time, be well. Bye-bye. Perfect.